I call this span comparison theorem. Uh, even though it's a theorem, uh, we're not going to prove that theorem. It's, a, it's not difficult, actually, but it's quite lengthy and technical. So I will just discuss the theorem with you, some corollaries, and that will be, that will be it. So the theorem goes like this. If I have two sets of vectors in a vector, uh, in a vector space, one of them I will call S, and it will be M, M for Mary vectors, uh, which I use the letter Y for. And the other set I will call B with N vectors, N for Nicholas. And I will, I will use the letter X for those vectors. All of them from, the, uh, from my vector space. And I'll make, I'll make additional assumption that B is a linear independent set. So S is any set. B is linearly independent set. Now, this span comparison theorem, and actually the same theorem is present in your yellow book even though I don't remember right now which section of the yellow book is that. It's, it goes like this. It says, if the first set of vectors, S, is spanning, and that's how, you're, that's how I write this in symbols, if span of S is equal to the whole vector space, so if yeah, the S is spanning, you can read this by saying S is spanning, then the theorem itself concludes that the number of vectors in B will never exceed the number of vectors in S. It's an outstanding theorem, and the proof is not easy. And it relies heavily, actually, on Gaussian elimination and uh, Gaussian elimination method. The yellow book doesn't have the proof either. I, th I think so. Or maybe it does. I'm not sure, actually. But it's not an easy proof. Uh, and the theorem, we're going to use it heavily, even on this slide. First, uh, I will point out a few corollaries, which uh, it's very handy to remember because just directly referring to this theorem is not convenient most of the time. There are a few corollaries. On my slide, I have three of them. Corollary one says this. If, so this setting, this setting at the top of the slide, it applies to all of the statements I'm about to show you. So if under this setting, so S and B, two subsets of my V, finite subsets, and B is linearly independent, if S and B, if they span the same amount of vectors, if the spans are identical to each other, again, the same conclusion is true. So if you require, rather than this, if you have the span of S equals span of B, then again, again, the number of vectors in S will never exceed the number of, the other way around, sorry. The number of vectors in linearly independent set will never exceed the number of vectors in the other set. You can see this corollary by just calling this span P. Second corollary, which is worth remembering when you, when you deal with the, with the, I mean, like a so second corollary, which was worth remembering, especially for many questions in the yellow book, says this. If, again, S and B, they span the same amount of vectors, if the spans are identical, and secondly, you know that S is also linearly independent. So not only B, linearly independent, but S is also linearly independent. Then in that case, they will have the same number of elements. And this corollary is simply application of this corollary twice. First you apply it to the SB pair, and then you apply it to BS pair. And the final one, the final one which I would like to mention, uh, the third one, it says this. If S and B are two bases in my vector space, then again, the number of elements in them, uh, the, number, the number of elements in these two bases will be the same. And that's again, that's, that's a corollary of corollary. I mean, if this is a corollary of the second statement here, because if S are bases, then the span of S and the span of B both equal to the whole vector space V. They both linearly independent. So let's say that's the case to apply the corollary number two.
that's not an easy observation, actually. I mean, that if you have two bases in the vector space, so two sets of linearly independent vectors which span this vector space, the fact that they have this identical number of elements, it's a fundamental observation, but it's not an easy observation. It relies on this comparison theorem. And if Yellow Book has a proof, if you check that proof, it's really lengthy proof, not an easy proof. But from our point of view, this corollary warrants the following definition, because now we, if we believe this corollary, if we know that the number of elements in every basis is the same, we can single out this number of elements, and we call it dimension. And that would be part of my definition. If I have a basis, if I have a basis in the vector space, then the number of elements is called the dimension of that vector space. And we normally write this with the writing like this. Dim of V is N. Again, if you think about that, if you think about that, it's not, it's not, it's not an obvious claim that whichever, doesn't matter, whatever basis you pick, whichever basis you pick, the number of elements will be, will, in the basis will be the same all the time. Only because of this fundamental observation, you, you can introduce the concept of dimension.